All right. So again, uh, like Murat, I'm sorry that uh, I have to speak uh, in English to be able to find my words, because uh, although I can speak Turkish fluently, uh, after 56 years of living in, in the United States, it's somewhat difficult at times to find my the, exactly the words that I wish to use. So again, I apologize that I'm speaking in, uh, in English. So dear friends, I thank, first of all, the organizers very much for giving me this opportunity to participate in this important meeting and make some remarks to honor the memory of my dear teacher and friend, Feza Gürsey. I first met Feza briefly in 1964 at Robert College in Istanbul, when I was a second year electrical engineering student. He had come for a day's visit to give a lecture. This almost by chance meeting turned out to be a very consequential event for my life because his advice sharply reoriented me to switch from engineering to physics and to begin planning a future academic career that I had not envisaged before meeting Feza. Four years later, by my good fortune, Feza moved from Brookhaven to Yale University in 1968. I was already at Yale in my second year of PhD, and it was just the time when I needed to uh, find an advisor, and Feza looked like my favorite for sure. And he graciously agreed to be my PhD advisor, and so uh, he did that for the following three years while I uh, continued at Yale. After graduation in 1971, I went away for a postdoctoral position at Berkeley, followed by an assistant professorship at Stanford. I left Stanford in the middle of my appointment when I was invited back to Yale to serve as a physics faculty colleague of Feza Gursey. This was a position uh, which I happily accepted and I continued to do for the following 10 years. Eventually, I moved on to my current position at the University of Southern California in 1984. So I've known Feza very closely for 13 years, during which I learned a lot from him and I greatly admired him for his intellect and his friendship. I am eternally thankful to him for the insights I gained through him about symmetry in physics. There is a lot to praise about Feza for the kind of deep scientist and exemplary person he was. He touched many lives and influenced many people. As an example of the decisive influence Feza had on many physicists, I would like to highlight some selections of my own personal and professional experiences with him. This will also exemplify the kind of person Feza was in his relations with his students and colleagues. I will talk about three circumstances. First, my meeting with him for the first time in 1964. Two, number two, Feza as my PhD advisor and later as my colleague at Yale. And number three, the social life with the Gursays. So number one, my meeting with Feza in 1964. I didn't know him until that consequential personal meeting at Robert College that I mentioned earlier. He was invited to give a prestigious physics lecture and was presented as a famous Turkish physicist living in America that had made great impact internationally in physics. But at that time, there was only one physics major, a single student, in the entire Robert College. So who will attend this important lecture? It was kind of embarrassing. Well, there were a few engineering students that served as assistants in the instructional physics labs. So all of those assistants were drafted to shore up the audience for Feza's lecture. I happened to be one of those assistants. Others that you may know and are here uh, uh, right now, uh, well, they included Alparsegyan, who unfortunately has passed away, or Han Aljolu, who is in the United States, Avadis Hajjanian, right here, and Haluk Bekir, who also uh, has passed away, as well as Mahmoud Hortaçsu. 
and several more of our con contemporaries. We were all there. And hopefully we have put up a decent looking audience. But I am afraid we were not up to par to understand Feza's lecture. Well, never mind. For me, the important part of Feza's visit was really what happened afterwards. Feza wanted to have a chat with quote unquote physics students. But who were the physics students? Well, again, the closest approximation was the physics lab assistants. So we were, again, drafted to meet Feza now as a group. This was indeed a wonderful meeting. Feza and Suha, who was also a physicist, together, they told us about what it is like to be a theoretical physicist. Number one, you teach very smart students and you are all surrounded by them. Number two, you do research on your own ideas about the latest concepts in physics and solve interesting problems. Wow, this is really what I love to do. You publish hopefully influential papers and finally you get invited to lecture in universities around the world, etc., etc. To me, this was like living in heaven where you are allowed to do only the things you enjoy the most. I could not imagine anything else that I would rather do daily that Feza, that, than what Feza was describing that day. This was a type of heaven I never knew existed before Feza told us about it. This opened my mind and my eyes. However, there was a catch. You must get a PhD in America that could take four to six years after the bachelor's degree. I was not prepared at all for that. I had a different plan. It took me a full year of struggling with myself to figure out how I could readjust my life to this new demand of an eternally long period of studentship that was required to obtain a PhD. Well, eventually the attraction to Feza's heaven won, and I made the switch from engineering to physics. I was not the only one to switch to physics. In that group, Al Parsergian or Han Aljoldo, Avadis Ajunian, Haluk Beker, Mahmoud Hortachu, they all switched to physics before me, as a matter of fact. So suddenly, the physics department had some of the top scoring students in the college, and physics began to be recognized as a prestige department, thanks to Feza. This was Feza's charm and influence on some of my contemporaries and especially on me. He changed my life completely and set it on a very different path than I had imagined before. I am eternally thankful for this. I am sure today you will hear similar stories from many other people that Feza touched throughout his life. So I go on now to number two, Feza as my PhD advisor and later as my colleague at Yale. As a student at Yale, I took a few extremely interesting courses that Feza taught. Among them, relativistic quantum field theory, symmetries, and group theory, and so on. All of which were done in his unique, elegant style. His approach influenced all of his students to understand much better and to think more deeply about fundamental concepts in physics, especially about symmetries. These became central tools for me in my later research. As his PhD student, Feza encouraged me to freely develop my own research ideas. This was not typical of most professors who normally assigned specific research projects to their PhD students. So I much appreciated his faith in me that I could find my own research topics. This was a time when there was a lot of interest in trying to find some order in the mysteries of the strong interactions. There were plenty of experimental results, but not a good enough theory to explain them. Field theory seemed to fail and go nowhere, but the so-called bootstrap ideas of Chu and Mandelstam were more and more popular. And then suddenly there emerged the Veneziano model that caught my attention and I found a way to make it work for the scattering of particles with spin and SU3 internal quantum numbers. Feza liked it very much, so this became the seed for my thesis. 
Well, I graduated and went away in 1971. Um, so after four years, uh, by the time I returned to Yale uh, in 1975, gauge theories had taken hold as the mainstream topic in fundamental theoretical physics. I had jumped into this topic early on in 1972 by performing some of the very early computations in what eventually became the standard model of elementary particles and fields. In fact, some of the computations I was involved in such as the weak interaction contribution to the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon, uh, now are, 50 years later, at the brink of either being verified or else leading to the discovery of new degrees of freedom beyond the standard model. Of course, FESA also was working on gauge theories, so we had a common interest by the time I got back in 1975. At my return to Yale, FESA was pursuing a deep role for quaternions and octonions in physics, and Murat just told you uh, the earlier uh, story uh, about how their interest in, his interest in octonions had started. So in this context, he saw a role of exceptional, for the exceptional groups, groups being applied to grand unified theories. FESA, together with students such as CKV and colleagues such as Ramon, wrote the leading papers involving E6 and E7 grand unified theories. Inspired by this, Murat Gunaiden and I added E8 to this approach. Now I go on with the social life with the Gusses. In social gatherings, gatherings FESA was unequivocally the center of attention. Every day, FESA, with some students and some faculty colleagues, would meet for lunch at the top of the biology tower next to the Gibbs laboratory where our offices were. FESA always had something very interesting to tell, and everyone listened with great pleasure. Topics ranged from physics or mathematics to, to mathematics to politics to literature, or simply talking about some of his famous friends, such as T.D. Lee, Yang, Nambu, Gelman, Radicati, and so on and so on. He was such an admirable intellectual that knew so much and always had worthwhile opinions about almost everything. Both Feza and Suha Yusei were very warm and welcoming people. They took care of their students almost like children and treated their own children and treated their friends like family. Often, there were party-like gatherings at the Gursays. These gatherings were extremely enjoyable. Some were impromptu and some were organized. The impromptu ones could happen just because we dropped by their house and found other friends that did the same thing. The organized ones sometimes featured some rare, very special Turkish dishes or Osmanli dishes that Suha had cooked for her guests. I remember especially Cherkes Tavu. A year or so after I moved to the University of Southern California, I invited Feza to give a colloquium. To entertain him during the weekend before the colloquium, I organized a small party at my house and invited his good old friend, Murray Gelman. Both men were very pleased to spend a nice afternoon together and shared opinions and stories and, uh, and, and, and so on. Later on, at the beginning of his talk the following Monday, the perfect gentleman Feza, in an emotional voice, said, I feel like a father that came from a distant land to visit his son and became content to learn that he is flourishing here. I was so glad that my teacher was happy about his disciple. Thank you.